If you were a kid between 1955 and, well, the mid-1980s here in the United States, the odds of you being carted around in one of these is pretty good. You see, station wagons were the precursor to the modern SUV. They generally seat between five and seven people. They usually came body on frame. But this one, this one's a bit different. This is a 1964 Pontiac Catalina wagon. It's got 550 horsepower big block. It used to be a police car and supposedly does really great burnouts. For some reason, that makes me think that it's gonna be just a little bit better than our dearly beloved battle bike. My name is Mike Musto. Each week I travel a country with the goal of showcasing the best and baddest muscle cars and hot rods around. Every car has a past and every owner a story. Welcome to the world of big muscle. My first automotive experience ever, ever, coming home from the hospital, was in the back of my mom and dad's 1970 Chevelle wagon. I am a huge, huge wagon guy. After that, my mom got a 19, I think it was a 79 Ford LTD wagon. That was green. That also had wood paneling. And every morning we would walk outside and we would find birds dead next to it because they would fly into the goddamn thing because they thought it was a tree. True story. This wagon is pretty slick. This is a Catalina Safari, Pontiac. It's a 1964. You generally don't see too many of these. They're really, really rare. A lot of times, if you were into, if you, if you were in a kind of like old school TV, and the guy at that and Zach always make fun of me, but like, if you watch shows like All in the Family, if you watch shows like Chips, if you watch shows like The Dukes of Hazard, you would see these wagons, these Catalina wagons, and they'd be used as police vehicles. They'd be used as ambulances because in reality, a lot of these wagons, that's what they were used for. Mike did a really, really good job of preserving the heritage of this old wagon. So for instance, he, he stripped it of a lot of its chrome and a lot of its stainless steel molding. A lot of people want to keep that, but for something like this, it, for some reason, it, it, it seems to work. A lot of times you, you do need to keep that because it breaks up all the color. And let's face it, on a wagon that's 20 feet long, you might want something to break it up. It works though here. I'm not really sure why, but it really does. I don't know if it's because of the awesome grill, the big you know, chrome bumper in the back, or just the fact that it, the stance, whatever the formula he decided to do on this works. You don't, first of all, you never see Catalinas. You see four doors, but you never see wagons. So what, what I mean, why is this here? Because it was 900 bucks. <laughs> I uh, was looking on Craigslist. Um, I had a little bit of money in my pocket from, uh, my daughter was born three months before. Okay. And uh, decided it was time to get it a little garage time. So you thought it was a good idea to buy when your daughter was born? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was really <laughs> smart, but it was in my price range and I, I, I looked at it, it was a police auction car. It was a very bad decision at the time. When I got it home, <laughs> it, was, it was just a rust bucket and it looked like somebody walked over with golf shoes. It was, it was in really bad shape. It sat about this high, so the, this part was about this high. It looked like a monster truck. It had these atrocious American racing wheels on it, like just huge, like 75 series tires. And it was, <laughs> it, uh, it kind of just bounced along down the road, puffing right. smoke, and had a 389 in it. Okay. Did you did you have any idea that this was an actual police car when you bought it? And do you know what it, what it did, like no. when it was in, in service? No, I have no idea. I, I just found the cow tag, and I was like, well, because we're trying to figure out, you know, what what actually came on the car. Yeah. I didn't really, to be honest with you, know much about Pontiacs. Right, okay. I'm a Chevy guy. Okay. Um, but I just liked the car, and so we were trying to figure out from the ID number that, you know, what you know, what color it was, what motor originally had, kind of, okay. and then doing a lot of Google research on it, we found that it's actually a 64. I bought it as a 62. <laughs> so it, uh, it was a little embarrassing, but, you know, I didn't know. I'd never seen one before, so. As a guy who used to street race, he kind of went back to his roots with this thing. So while this thing looks amazing, you don't put a 550 horsepower Nelson Racing Engine's big block under the hood if you don't want to go really, really fast. I mean, this thing, this thing goes, it's one of those things where once it kicks down, you, you really got to hold on. The other thing is suspension. Mike said it was pretty stock. He cut the springs to give it the right look. You know, put a nice set of shocks on it, but when you throw it into a corner, 
it handles very, very nicely. He's got a set of Toyos on here. The rims are 18 inches. He's running 245s on the front, 275s in the back, but it really sticks. A lot of that is because this is a big body on frame car. It's just a real solid feeling car. There's no rattles, there's no squeaks, and it just kind of feels right. You know, I don't want, I wouldn't want to take this to a road course, or I wouldn't want to take it to an autocross because I think it's just simply too big. But I believe for what Mike uses this car for, it really, really is perfect. Now in the brake department, Mike's got a, a Curry nine inch rear in the back and he's got disc brakes. I believe they're off an Explorer in the back and the front is a kit from a company called Scarebird. And they're kind of basic all around disc brakes. They're manual brakes. So like it, not for nothing, like I'm pulling this thing to a stop when I tell you I'm working right now to stop this car, I'm working. If you have little tiny legs and you don't work out or you don't exercise, do not drive this car because you will rear end everything you come across. I was gonna do the bodywork at first. I, I did the firewall, I smoothed the firewall myself. I thought I'd do that like in a weekend. Okay. Like three and a half months later, I was still sanding on the thing and I finally got it to where I was happy with it. Shot that and then I just gave up and tried to figure out, you know, what I was going to do for paint and then uh, took it up to uh, Jason Pensaconis at Timeless Customs in Camarillo and uh, he thought it was a big car and it was it was rough and but he's, he just said leave it here and I wasn't planning on leaving it I just wanted to get a quote right and I'm like he's like if you want this back anytime soon leave it here and we'll start working on it and okay. he'd send me pictures on my iPhone you know every every now and again and I'd like freak out and <laughs> get so stoked on it but it, uh, it was a long process and it was he said it was the longest car he's ever painted and, and it, there's just green dust all over his entire building. <laughs> what do you what do you think when you saw that when then with the 1200 horsepower Nova video? All right yeah your 1200 horsepower Nova video that was my favorite that's what kind of got me started on Big Muscle that, that got me excited because it was just the full sleeper I love sleepers always have and when in the opening scene when that thing just comes railing across just in a big fiery burnout I'm like that is just sick I loved it so that was that was definitely uh, it still is my favorite episode. So we're allowed to do burnouts with this? I'd, I'd, I'd really hope you would. <laughs> Things actually got a lot of grip when you take off. Wow, it has more grip than I thought. Is there no speedometer? No, the speedometer doesn't work. That's all right. My butt speedo says we're doing about 50. Okay. So I think we're good. Let's find a spot to do a burnout. All right, let's find a spot to do a burnout. Let's see what she does. It's <laughs> a nice little stretch of pavement. This is a little stretch of pavement. And what happens when you have a nice little stretch of pavement? You do burnouts. Uh, we should do another burnout up here. We should do another burnout up here? Alright. Like guys that own muscle cars be like, yeah, I never did a burnout. What the hell's the matter with you? Why would you even own that car? You shouldn't own that car. You should email me and then you should give it to me and I'll do burnouts with it. Let's try another burnout. Let's try another burnout. See the smoke? <laughs> I can do burnouts every day for the rest of my life and I'd never get sick of it. They're always awesome. Oh! I forgot to tell you guys, it's got a siren. It used to be a police car. It's got a siren. <laughs> I love it. Some people do. A lot of people underestimate this car. Do they think like if you pull up to a light that it's just like, ah, it's a big friggin' wagon. Nobody ever challenges me to a race, ever. It just, they look at it like, oh, well, whatever. You know, it's a big, loud car, but they don't, they don't, I, I don't get them revving me. When I was a kid, you revved, you know, a, yeah. a granny and a grand ash. Right. But uh, nobody ever challenges me. I always have to do the, I have to, I have to pick a fight. Are they generally surprised? Usually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the wagon in and of itself is awesome. It's rare. I mean, this car goes around corners. You never think a big girl like this could do what it does but it does it and it does it very, very well. It's an oddball. That's what you have to think about when you build a hot rod. Don't simply, you know, copy somebody else's design. Make it your own. Whatever you feel in here, put it in here. 
The key is when you get out of it, the only thing that you should do is smile. And that's exactly, that's exactly what this car did for me today. It made me smile and it's awesome. Thanks, Mike. There's a nice straightaway just past the, the fire station. And yeah, but this says school zone. Yeah, yeah, that's a bad area. Remember, no burnouts in a school zone, even for the kids. Now it makes me want to do stuff to the battle wagon. Hey, Tom, at Tom Nelson Racing Engines, do you want to give us a motor for the battle wagon? <laughs> because we can really use it, and we'll give you a lot of publicity. Warning, mountain lion risk. Yeah. Known to attack without warning. Your safety cannot be guaranteed. Don't tell that to Zach and Mike. They'll probably be upset about that. What's up here? You see that chicken? It's like a nine foot chicken. It's a big cock. <laughs> that is a big cock. You are correct, my friend. <laughs>